Okay everybody, we're here I'm gonna redo a 99 Honda Civic distributor. I just wanted to give uh, some brief pointers and tips on how to disassemble and rebuild it and the kit that I'm using to replace the inner seal and the outer seal. So here we go. First, uh, this plaster right here is cut out. It's removable. It clips into some little deals inside the housing. One goes there and the other one goes in this slot right here. That's where these two little things are going. And then next we're going to take the rotor off. I already took the screw out. So that's the rotor. Next we want to take off the, the coil. We'll take out the ignition coil first since that's the biggest piece. Because once the ignition coil is out, you'll be able to see inside it like this one. So you can see what's going on down there. And obviously you'll be able to see if it's leaking oil. And on this uh, particular distributor that I wanted to take apart, uh, I just wanted to point out to Sarah and Anthony, this coil has a crack from up here going down. You can see it going here and going across this way. So the coil is damaged and also one of the magnetic uh, pickup deals is cracked. So I can zero it in right there. But you can see the crack right along here, kind of starting this way, going that way. So it's got some parts that have been heated up and electronically damaged and that might be cause of, uh, the primary cause of why it's shutting off. Also. Once we get the coil out, we're going to be able to look at the inside and see how wet that is. But you can see where it's been leaking for a long time. There's the hole right there where the inside seal leaks out of. Uh, so it doesn't fill up the distributor cap. So next we're taking off the ignition coil. So we're going to concentrate what these wires are. Uh, we got this one with the black heat shrink on there going to the top one and then this one down here the wire is black with a yellow line that goes on the bottom one so we're going to take these two wires off this screw and that screw so that the coil comes out okay while i was taking this out i noticed that this coil has two screws holding it from the top also one holding it from the bottom down there uh, this plug, where to go? This plug came out of there. This goes in here like so. So you just pop this plug out, and it'll expose that screw. And I think it's the same way with this one. So you got wires. So in order to get that one up and out of the way, you gotta unbuckle the harness all the way around it. So you gotta unclip these and unbuckle it from there, take the screwdriver out. And what I like to do is when I pull these screws out, I like to stick them back where they belong after the part's been removed so that we know where the, what screws went where and how it goes back together. Okay, now you can see with the ignition coils out of the way, I slipped it out. Now you can see inside the housing where the screws were attached. There's another one there and there. So there was four holding this coil. On that one, there's only two. So I guess they get better at it as they do it. And now you can see inside how soaking wet it is. See the oil back there on the lip? See, and you got this cable right here full of oil. Once we get this top area taken apart, you'll be able to see how it got all over the, the bottom one of this. There's one up here and one on the bottom on these 99 Civics. On the newer ones, there's three. So next we're going to take off the, I believe this is called the igniter. So we'll pull that off and we're going to show that if you're looking at it from the back side of it, the yellow wire goes on the left. I believe this is a black wire. Goes on the middle and white with the blue line goes on the right. And then the blue wire goes all the way to the far right, right here. You can see that. And all that goes off of this piece right here. 
So we're gonna take that out and we're gonna show how it looks like once we get this hard. I need this harness to install on that distributor after I clean it all up. Okay, next, uh, if you can see that screw right down there, we gotta get that screw to unbuckle the harness from the distributor. So let's get that screw out, take this wire, this wire, and the side one off because these are going to this harness, I believe, and uh, we'll be able to snake it out through the bottom. Okay, now I got these wires all undone. We're gonna take this magneto out so that the wires won't get caught up on the way out. So, I mean, not the magneto, the, uh, shoot, what's that called? Igniter, the igniter. Okay, when you get them out, make sure you take these two screws out. That'll loosen the igniter from the housing. And don't forget that little one. That's just a tie down clamp to hold the harness close to the igniter. So don't forget to take that screw off. Okay, and again, I'll put the screws back on the igniter. They won't go on the housing because there's no threads on them. So put them on the igniter so that you know where those screws went. Put that to the side. Now you got a better visual that the harness is ready to come out of there. Just slip it under and over. And there's the other harness. Now I'm going to stick this one on that one because this one when I got it okay that's my new one and this is the other one this one has a condenser and somehow or another the wiring harness isn't passing power so somebody put another lead where that white one goes tied it into it stuffed it through that rubber deal and put a new wire on it and I don't want this rigged up I want this profession now Distributor rebuild. So we're just setting that one to the side. So we're gonna clean this harness, add it in there, and put it back together and stick the original stuff I had on this one together. So if you want to see down at the bottom, you can see where all the oil is at in there. But if you want to see the rest of the distributor disassembly so that you can rebuild your original one and not have one as a backup, uh, we'll keep on going. Okay, next we're going to take off this uh, magnetic pickup deal right here. There's a screw there and a screw there. Once we get this up and out of the way, we can put the screws back right there. Okay, there it is with the magnetic pickup coil to the side. Stuck the screws back in. Now to get the shaft out, on the back side of it, you have to take this clip off. Once you got the clip out of the way, there's a little rod in there. You just stuff something in there and it'll slide out the other side. Make sure you line it up with the line here. This line here is going to the housing. And if you look at the tip, you're gonna see one side's closed off, that's the back. And the other side of the hole is like wide open. You can see the threads in it. I wish it would focus, it's not focusing. But this side's a thread, this is the side the screw goes in. So if I have the rotor, which is over here. You can see the rotor on one side is closed off, but when you look at the other side, it's got where the screw goes. So that's going to be this way. So the rotor pointed to number one is pointed that way. Let's see with the... That's the line on the housing. With the rotor pointed... Oops. Okay, let's try this again. You can see that the housing, I mean that deal is lined up with the housing line. And if you look at the distributor, the flat side down, the rotor's pointed towards the right. That's where number one's assuming to be. Okay, so that's how you want the shaft before you take it apart. Or else if you put this piece on backwards, you're gonna be, what is it, 180 off? 360, yeah, 180 off. So it'll be pointed the opposite way. It'll be pointed down towards this side. 
when it should be pointed up towards the right with the flat side down. Okay, let's go on to the next piece. We're gonna take off these three screws. There's another one on this side. And this center section will come out. Okay, I got those top three screws out. And uh, lo and behold, as I was taking one out, as you can see, it, the screw broke off in there. So it's a good thing I built this one on the side so that it's ready for the customer when they take the car. Because this one I'm gonna have to spend uh, some extra time to try to get that screw out, if it's even possible. But I'm gonna give it a heck of a shot. So we're gonna flip this over and take this ring off right here. And I'm gonna try to show you, I, I can't do it with my uh, hands occupied and trying to get that clip out. So I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do is I got a pocket screwdriver. And you can see the cut of the clip is right there. So I'm gonna stick the pocket screwdriver in the hole like so, pick up the clip like so, turn it around. Push it up, and eventually you'll be able to work it all the way around, and bam, the clip just comes off. Put that there, turn it around. This is the part I was telling you to push that rod out. I guess you could use one of your long screws. Stick it in there and uh, push that sucker out. Grab it out of there and put that down. Pull the screw out and there's that deal. And be sure to look at on the bottom of this piece, sorry, on the bottom of this piece there's a shim. Always remember the shim goes first. Oh actually this one has two shims. I think it holds the position of where the shaft should be at. So remember, your shems go on first, and however many shems go on there has to go back on. This one has two. This one only had one. So I only put one back on on this shaft. So this one has two. When I put it back together, it has to have two on there. Or else the rotor would be too high and it'll run into the cap or some other reason. <laughs> So next, you can flip it down this way, and if you see this side, when you tap it on the table, the top comes out, like so. So let me use two hands, and I'll show you what it looks like with the top, top off. Okay, now I took the time to put my screws back in, so now I got all four of the ignition coil screws in. If you look down there where that clamp was, I got that screw back in. The shaft is up and to the side now. And uh, I want you to pay close attention. These older distributors end up going bad really fast. When the oil starts leaking, it turns the inside of the wires really hard and they start breaking apart. And I wish this phone would focus and you could see that the wires are bare in there. Focus, focus. Well, anyways, uh, be real extra careful. These The plastic on these wires end up cracking off because it's full of oil. The heat turns them real brittle and soft, and then it just starts cracking off. So you got to be real careful with that. And uh, the way these wires are set up, these rubber plugs, these wires go right through it. So if they are oiled up enough, the wire you can tug it on one side and it'll pull through the rubber deal and tug it on the other side. So if you want to rebuild it, then uh, wiring harness. I do have uh, a wiring schematic for 96 to 98 Honda Civic if you want to see that and I haven't been able to make one for any other ones but as soon as I come out with some new ones I'll, I'll post them. So next we got to do is take off that screw and that screw to get this lower magnetic pickup coil out we're gonna unhook that rubber piece from the housing so it's just the housing by itself I also wanted to bring up <clears throat> I already got this screw out 
when I was taking this one out is when I noticed this. This screw is a pivot point. This side is long and oblong, but if you see here, there's a cut inside the bracket. There's also a notch in the housing. You stick a flat blade screwdriver in there to do the adjustment before you lock it down. So just to keep in mind, and there's also one on the top. Like on this one, you see that one right there? You take a flat blade screwdriver and you adjust it. And if you can see where I have that one adjusted, if I get a light, you're gonna see how much clearance is going through that. See that? Just enough to clear it, but not enough to touch it, because if you touch it, it'll break the pickup coil. And that's probably what happened to that one, why it was cracked. So we're gonna take that, screw the rest of the way out, take the uh, magnetic pickup coil out and that rubber plug out of the housing. So you can see what the housing looks like without it. Okay, now we got everything off. It's just the housing by itself. I stuck the screws back on, on that blower magnetic pickup coil. Now you just got the seal, and now you can see that how it's really wet and how bad that seal was. It wasn't holding no oil coming from inside. And that's what stops the current from flowing to your ignition system, so it prevents your spark plug from firing. You'll get uh, misfire codes. Uh, for the older cars, I don't know if it'll be a misfire code, but you'll feel a misfire, and uh, eventually it just won't run because it's so saturated with the oil. Oil cannot travel through... like or electricity cannot travel through oil like it can travel through water. If you stand in a tub full of water, you can get electrocuted, but if you stand in that same tub full of motor oil, nothing will happen. Don't test my theory though, but that's what I've been told. <laughs> uh, we've had seminars over at Bakersfield College uh, talking about Permatex and their different products and about oil and water and so now that we can get the housing and clean it up, I'm going to show you how to remove these seals. The old ones don't matter, it doesn't matter if you break them, so I just get my little pocket screwdriver. Stick them in there, grab it, hook it, pull it up and over. Oh, this one's really hard and it just broke off, so that's that one. And now I'm getting a flat blade screwdriver. A flat blade screwdriver, I'm going to stick it on the bottom side of this side. Be careful not to scrape or mess up the insert that's right here. See this insert's where the shaft of the distributor shaft rides on. So try not to scratch that up, but if you can see in there, you can see the bottom lip of the seal. You're going to get a flat blade screwdriver, turn it around and pop it out. Or you can stick it from the top and pry up on it. Let's see if that works. Be very careful not to scratch the sidewalls. If they are scratched, you may have to put a, a bit of... A, either aircraft sealant or uh, Permatex's uh, liquid gasket some kind of purple stuff with a brush on it and then you just brush it on there and then you slip the seal on get a few hours to dry and it'll bond the seal on there and it'll fill in the area where the scratch was just try to pop this out 